As sons of God, we have the exclusive privilege of spirit traveling beyond the natural realm and into realms of the spirit. Beyond heaven and hell, there exists many realms inaccessible by the physical, unlocked through translation, which is a scriptural term for spirit travel. These realms vary wildly in their nature and purpose, are filled with mystery, and can be overwhelming without understanding. We'll take a high-level look at some of the vast number of realms we'll encounter in the spirit. Oftentimes, we'll be taken to realms of light which may appear heavenly, but are not the heavens as we know it, or heaven at all. These realms exist across the cosmos and vary in function. They can act as a spiritual reality behind what is occurring in the natural, for the spirit frames the natural. One night, I ascended through the clouds into a realm of light where I observed many cargo boats sailing across the sea suspended in the clouds. Colored with the palette of the rainbow, they carry the cargo of heaven. This was a behind-the-scenes look at the spiritual reality of the delivery of these spiritual gifts. We can access these realms of the Spirit through the language of the Spirit, which is prayer in tongues. The next time you awake during sleep, pray in tongues for a couple hours internally. No need to verbalize or move your tongue, just do it in your head from a place of rest. Sometimes these realms are symbolic in nature, either totally or in part. They require interpretive understanding, which we learn to develop in this series. We see this throughout the Revelation account, Jesus symbolically appearing as a slain lamb with seven horns and seven eyes, the latter of which are the seven spirits of God, and Satan as a dragon who sweeps down a third of the stars, which are the fallen angels, and so forth. Decoding these symbols unlocks the mystery or treasure hidden within these realms. Proverbs 25.2 reads, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, and the glory of kings to search it out. On the more extreme end, these realms can be peculiar. Hearing loud clanking one night, my vision opened to something like a gigantic game of mousetrap, situated in an unrealistically large house. I was carried behind a giant marble rolling up and down these tracks. When we encounter these realms, we approach them like a dream, identifying core symbols, actions, and feelings, interpreting each element individually and as a whole, considering the context surrounding the translation, that is, anything notable that occurred in our life around the time of the experience. We can engage these realms in translation through the stewardship of our dreams. When we awake, record, transcribe, interpret, and respond to our dreams, it creates a pathway of honor which opens us up to new realms. This also increases our dream authority, opening up portals within dreams that shift us into translations. While certain realms may contain one or a few mysteries, others are saturated with them. On occasion, I'll be taken to places covered with revelatory writings, whether it be in English, numerical, or of languages unknown. Retaining this information can feel overwhelming and impossible, and is something I've yet to learn to do. Still, having encountered these revelations, a pathway has been created to them in the Spirit, which we can revisit when our maturity as sons increases. For now, we can consider them spiritual deposits and a motivation to mature. Recently, my spirit lifted into the sky where a gigantic great white shark made of aqua-colored light floated before me, its jaws wide open. The jaws shut and I was taken to another realm where I observed various colored papers forming something like cubes, prophecies written all over and on every side. Totally overwhelmed with information, I captured just one of the revelations. There was a large number that rapidly ticked down until it hit 640. It read, Canada, 640, people. Symbolic realm or not, many translations benefit from interpretation. Biblically, 6 is a number of man, and 40 is a number of testing. Thus, 640 is a number of tribulation. Revelation 3.10 reads, The hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. As for the rapid decrease in the number of people, I believe this is related to a series of prophetic experiences I had regarding Canada and judgment, which can be viewed here. When we faithfully steward prophetic dreams through interpretation, intercession, declaration, and or release, we can be entrusted to access realms which are revelatory in nature. In times of tribulation, there will be places accessible by the sons of God which act as refuges of safety. These exist both within the natural and spiritual realms. Throughout the scriptures, the Lord directs his people geographically as a means of protection. We see this with the Exodus, Elijah escaping Jezebel, Mary and Joseph fleeing to Egypt with infant Jesus as King Herod sought to kill the child, Holy Spirit forbidding Paul and his companions from preaching in the province of Asia, and the woman in Revelation, thought to be symbolic of the church, fleeing into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared by God 
to be nourished for 1260 days. I visited a refuge once. This refuge was a building about 100 feet in height, their front facing wall composed entirely of windows, and the three surrounding walls windowless concrete. The refuge resided on an island surrounded by crystal waters, and it was beautiful. Inside, the refuge appeared as a massive house, seemingly possessing more space than the exterior would let on. Antique furniture was strewn throughout and other people were present. As I navigated this place, I would occasionally hear the song of angels. Many personal aircraft were parked outside the refuge, varying in size and appearance, some appearing to be from the future. I believe these were chariots, symbolic of translation by faith, and that this refuge was accessible only via translation by faith. As we progress in translation, we may be taken to these refuges and given instruction as to how to access them when needed. The spiritual realm can also overlap the natural realm. On a mission-based translation, I rode the wings of a large silver and gold eagle with a painterly appearance. Next to us, a six to eight foot heavenly bee adorned in gemstones of various colors. The eagle dropped me off in the middle of the city, at which point I entered a massive circular construct that resided in the city center. This was, to the best of my knowledge, a Buddhist temple. This temple was multi-floored with red wooden dragons carved out and statues of iron warriors positioned throughout. I heard loud meditative ohms in this gigantic altar to the demonic. On a more relatable level, Holy Spirit will often show me my home in the spirit. Sometimes this means seeing the spirit realm overlapping the natural, such as various trees growing throughout my home, a biblical symbol of life. Or rooms altogether altered, speaking to the function or nature of that room in the spirit. One morning, I awoke in my bedroom to see it transformed into a heavenly library, navy blue cloth-bound books filling every wall and up to the ceiling. This is indicative of my bedroom being a place of heavenly revelation, as the Lord uses the night to unveil divine mysteries to me. Unlocking our spiritual sight allows us to more easily engage these realms, seeing what is truly going on in the natural, witnessing the spiritual realities overlapping that which surrounds us. In this series of trainings, we learn various ways to open our spiritual eyes as well as how to cleanse ourselves of the defilements which blind them. Spirit realms can also be defiled and saturated by evil. One night, I was taken into an expansive wilderness that was altogether lifeless. The land was dry and parched rock situated throughout. My spirit was rapidly carried towards a cave with a pitch black door about 20 feet in height. It was a portal. When I find my spirit traveling towards a place I'm unsure of, like this dark portal, or downward towards hell, I'll internally say something along the lines of, Lord, I'm only going there if you want me to. This is a safe prayer that will sometimes end or redirect the travel. At other times, the Lord will indeed want us to go to these places, but it must expressly be by his instruction and leading, lest we illegally engage beings that seek to destroy our lives. After communicating this to the Lord, I was swiftly redirected and guided around the cave, now headed towards another also with a black door, other caves just like it, present in this wilderness. Dodging the second cave, I was finally taken to a body of filthy water, three tornadoes forming within, one after the other. Interpreting this with Holy Spirit, I believe each cave acted as a portal leading to another realm of darkness. The tornadoes are whirlwinds, biblical symbols of God's judgment, on that which is unclean, represented by the filthy water. Three speaks to God's divine stamp of judgment. What was being judged was not made clear. In instances where information is lacking, we seek the counsel of the Lord in stillness for revelation, which we learn how to engage in this training. Similarly, there are counterfeit realms built to deceive. In what began as a revelatory dream, I observed people who desire to translate at any cost. I then looked down and was holding a bottle which was alive inside. I observed a believer mixing with worldly company and entertainment. I then shifted into a translation, entering into a realm of mirrors, a symbol for illusion. I understood the mirrors to be portals and walked through one, entering into a realm disguised as outer space, a great number of logos suspended in this fake cosmos. Here too existed many portals, each leading to a different realm. I began moving through different logos, entering into various realms, and upon entry they appeared amazing, but as time went on, the cracks began to show and their counterfeit nature was revealed. The realms would close in and I felt the choking of these disingenuous places, like I was trapped in a bottle I had been holding. These realms were elaborate forgeries void of the presence and glory of God and didn't have the markers of kingdom translation I am accustomed to. Those who move in astral projection, which is the demonic counterfeit of translation, and believe they can traverse beyond the earth are deceived and are instead moving across these illusionary realms. 
This experience is a warning to one, believers who desire to move in power at any cost, even if it means applying the methodology of the occult, and two, believers who desire to move in power without forsaking the things of the world, which are rooted in distraction and darkness. Continuing on in unclean mixtures opens up offenders to dark and counterfeit realms, trapping them. The only way to be freed from this defiled mixture and escape the trap is to smash the bottle. In the next video, we'll begin looking at spiritual disciplines which accelerate our maturity as sons and nurture a lifestyle of translation.